Emma is a self-acclaimed queen of corporate events, and she works in an upscale corporate events firm. She is the queen of affirmations as the movie begins with her muttering her day's affirmation quotes for her meeting with her boss, Danielle. Danielle is impressed with her presentation, and informs her of an opening at their Seattle office. Emma is excited that Danielle would consider her for the position, and she promises to think about the offer, which entails relocating to Seattle. With work settled, and with permission from Danielle, Emma rushes along to attend her sister Miranda's engagement party. Miranda finds Emma rearranging flowers after making some beautiful hashtag signs. She tries her luck again to convince Emma to help her plan her wedding. But Emma claims that she is not experienced enough to plan a wedding, especially one happening in six weeks' time. With no willing planner in town, and not ready to postpone her wedding, which coincides with her anniversary, Miranda decides to plan it herself. It's Miranda's turn to disturb Emma about a relationship. But Emma is solely focused on building a career for herself, she puts relationships and marriage on the back burner in the meantime. But her mom Nell and her sister do not relent in their quest to matchmake her with guys, it's either the guy who's passionate about Ferris wheels, or even the random chef contracted for Miranda's engagement party. Emma's got her work cut out for her as regards her family. On her way to the back to get the kids out to the front yard, she narrowly escapes being knocked down by a biker, who she realizes is a guy she knows called Liam. They get talking and reminisce about their date that ended badly a year ago. He runs a successful bike store in town, which describes his affinity for bikes. He helps her hide from cousin Becky, who has an awful-looking sash for Emma with, Maid of Honor, boldly written on it. They go to meet the rest of the engagement party crowd, and Emma doesn't think anything of it when she realizes that Liam is familiar with almost everyone at the party. It's a small world after all. But she is stunned when she learns that her mom has already met Liam. Apparently, Liam is Miranda and Brett's best man for the wedding. And with Emma being the maid of honor, their paths will be crossing frequently for the wedding. It's time for Emma's speech as maid of honor. The thought of standing up in front of the crowd to speak about the couple makes her feel sick with nerves. Realizing Emma's stage fright, Liam walks up to help her out. He cracks a joke that lightens the tension, and they are able to make a heartfelt speech in honor of the couple. Emma and Liam are off in a corner discussing with the couple of the day, soon joined by cousin Becky, who has two awful pink sashes for both Emma and Liam, much to Emma's dislike and the couple's amusement. Miranda, Nell and Emma are in a boutique in search of the perfect dress for Miranda's big day. The girls try so hard to stop their mother Nell from going overboard with her lace ideas. Emma is still unsure about taking the Seattle job, but Miranda is proud of her and encourages her to do what's best for her career. After lots of searches, Miranda comes out of the dressing room in the most beautiful wedding dress that leaves her mom and sister tongue-tied. Her mom hands her the veil she wore on her own wedding day, and the women bond over the thoughts of their late father and husband. Emma and Miranda return home to a sad news. An issue has come up at Miranda and Brett's consulting company, which requires them to travel out of town and which will last possibly for a few weeks. With dates already slated for their appointments with wedding vendors, and no hopes of hiring a wedding planner, Miranda asks Emma to help them attend all her appointments. Just to make it sound less sophisticated, she calls it a wedding stand-in. Emma is scared that she will make a mess of their wedding, but Miranda and Brett have faith in her decisions, with an added bonus of not making her wear cousin Becky's awful sash again. Emma reluctantly reluctantly agrees to their idea. Emma's settled, it's now time for a stand-in for Brett. Miranda suggests Brett's cousin, but Emma rejects him outright, he is a perfume connoisseur, and Emma claims that she would love to still have a working nose after the wedding plans. Their only option is Liam, and when he's told, he finds it difficult to believe that the couple are giving them carte blanche powers to plan Brett and Miranda's entire wedding, funny times are ahead. Miranda and Brett find it exciting to simply arrive at their wedding, ready to be surprised by any plans Emma and Liam make. According to their favorite quote, it's only the date that matters for them. Liam spends time at his bike shop, and he finds it annoying that people seem more interested in purchasing modern electric bikes than investing in solid vintage ones. He has a passion project of restoring old bikes, just to change how old bikes are viewed by people. He is impressed by his favorite customer's vintage bike, which is more his style. Ed pays him with a batch of freshly baked goodies, since Liam refuses to accept payment for his services. Emma, on the other hand, is neck deep in planning for the wedding. Her boss Danielle is excited for her, and thinks it's the perfect distraction Emma needs before she makes the big decision about Seattle. She gives her the time off work to allow her to plan the wedding. It's Flowers Day appointment for the wedding stand-ins. Liam arrives at the flower shop one minute earlier than their agreed time, meets Emma there, and she is impressed with Liam's time management skills, which seems to have improved since their date a year ago. They meet Natalie the florist, who mistakes them for the couple and congratulates them on their engagement. Emma is flustered at the thought of her being engaged, and they both correct Natalie that they are just stand-ins for the actual couple. Ready to smash their first wedding stand-in role, they start their search for the perfect flower. It's not as easy a role as they planned, because it's difficult for them to see eye-to-eye -eye on some of the flowers they each choose. 
but it's love at first sight for them when they see a beautiful bouquet of deep yellow flowers which signify new beginnings. Even the florist is impressed at their choice. Emma is excited that they are able to achieve something, sure that Melinda will love the flowers as much as they do. They are interrupted by Natalie, who hands her card to Liam with an instruction for him to call for anything concerning the wedding, or anything else. Liam is a good sport about it, as he takes the card from her with a promise to call. Emma dons an expressionless face, as she does not involve herself in the conversation. Emma seems to find the stand and position to be a bit more overwhelming than she expected. She finds it annoying working with ribbons and adding personal touches to seating arrangements, rather than the pragmatic approach she is used to at work. Her mom Nell calms her down and hands her her personal wedding album for inspiration. It brings back some fond memories for them. Nell encourages Emma to keep trying out new things. Who knows, she might even fall in love with wedding planning, as she has always had her own thoughts about how weddings should be, right from her childhood. She visits Liam at his workshop and is impressed with the work he is going on. Liam introduces her to Ed, who owns a bakery, and they make arrangements to keep him in mind for wedding cake testing. She is intrigued by Liam's little corner, filled with vintage bikes for his passion project. She considers his work admirable. It's time for their next wedding task, a visit to the wishing bells. They find an old couple dancing alone while the band plays, so Liam persuades Emma to join them. They have fun dancing, and it's apparent that Liam has some great dancing skills, courtesy of his grandma. They twirl and sashay all over the dance floor, with their arms around each other, until their eyes meet and freeze as they stare at each other. The moment is broken by the older couple, who appreciate their dancing skills. They mistake them for a couple, and the old man advises them to keep dancing to make their relationship last longer. As they watch the couple go, Liam talks of growing old together with the special one, with a wistful smile on his face. Emma turns the table around on her mother as she considers setting Nell up on a date, preferably through a dating website. She believes it's time she starts seeing other men, as her father would want the same for Nell. Nell laughs over it and tells Emma not to worry about her. They go to the farmer's market to buy some things, but their time together is filled with Emma trying to solve one wedding planning issue or the other. It seems she's taking the planning too seriously, so her mom advises her to stop being a worrywart and allow the event center do their own job. Nell runs into Ed from the bakery. They are both interested in the only jar of honey remaining on the table but Ed, like the gentleman he is, allows Nell to have it. Emma is surprised to see them talking. She introduces them to each other, and it's obvious the two older people have a thing for each other, with Ed stuttering all over his words and Nell acting like a shy schoolgirl. With a Cheshire smile on her face, Emma teases Nell about still having it at her age, leaving Nell's face heating up in embarrassment. Both Liam and Emma think alike, they believe that old pieces have far more worth than people give them. Emma visits him at the shop with a handful of linens which she got from the farmer's market for Miranda's wedding. The next on their to-do list is the wedding food. Emma organizes a private testing at one of the restaurants she uses for her high-end projects at work. But it leaves Liam not too impressed with their services, as he rates them a six. Liam is curious about what she does at work, but it's obvious from her voice that her work at the firm doesn't inspire her, and it doesn't give her butterflies in her stomach. Liam advises her to branch off and set up her own business, where she can plan the events she likes, which he has noticed are weddings. The posh and proper food and ambience of the restaurant doesn't feel like what Brett, and Miranda would choose for their wedding. After trying so hard to cut into his lobster tails, Liam is forced to tell Emma that the restaurant doesn't really suit her. They both decide to look for another caterer that can cover the food for the wedding. Although she has none in mind, Liam promises to help out, since they are in it together. They leave and decide on some street food, which they enjoy beside the lake, and Emma jokingly asks if Brett and Miranda would consider serving fast food at their wedding. They decide to brainstorm ideas on their next task, and Emma teases him on his poor sketches of his bike designs. Even though she teases him, she is impressed with his passion project and his drive for change in the community. They share stories about their first bike rides, and they reminisce about their first date, which ended with them falling almost into a puddle from Liam's tandem bike. Nell is concerned that Emma takes the wedding planning too seriously, which might lead to her being stressed out, so she observes her with concern as she searches for a caterer for the wedding. Nell takes matters into her hands and forces Emma to take a break and do something fun like baking. Their fun time together reminds them of when Emma was much younger. She appears happier and doesn't look as stressed as she did before. Liam stays true to his word, as he succeeds in getting them a perfect caterer for the wedding. He invites her to a restaurant for a tasting, and she is stunned by the view that graces her sight when she arrives there. Apparently Natalie from the flower shop hooked Liam up with the caterer. Emma is surprised that they are still in contact. Her mood changes, and she is eager to get started with the tasting itself. Liam really surprised Emma with the choice of restaurant and she has a strong belief that they have found the perfect one for the wedding. Her admission pleases him, and he tries to soak it in, as her praises do not come often. 
As they try out the food, Emma is curious about his dating life and if he will be attending the wedding with a date. Liam claims he doesn't have a girlfriend, so he will be coming solo. It's same for Emma, work has been her focus for the past year. They seem to like the food and ambience at the restaurant, as it scores a 10 for both of them. And finally, they cancel catering from their list of tasks for the wedding. Emma is eager to spend more time with Liam, and she promptly agrees to go ride biking with him on the property. They find themselves in a beautiful garden close to the water, it's such a serene and picturesque place, and they both agree that Brett and Miranda would surely love it. Talking about the engaged couple, and the love they both share, leaves Liam nostalgic as he talks about wanting their type of love. He is surprised to hear from Emma that she has no idea of what she wants, especially since she always seems so sure of herself. She talks about finding her dream man and then losing him in the past, but they both agree that she shouldn't stop her search. Emma's plans for the wedding are coming underway, and she is happy with her progress, as her sister notices her improved countenance, and is curious about it. She questions Emma on the source of her happiness, which she suspects has to do with Liam. Miranda is happy that two of the most important people in her life are getting along better than she thought, encouraging Emma to be open, in case it leads to more between them. But Emma waves it off as nothing. Liam stops by to drop off a list of beverage vendors for the wedding. Emma is impressed by this work rate. Feeling a bit daring, she asks him to help her with figuring out the mood board for the wedding. Apparently it's missing something, Liam suggests tennis shoes, and this gets Emma thinking that she needs to have fun while planning. She confesses to Liam that she never thought their paths would cross again after their awful date last year, and they reminisce over their time together on the date, and the things that went wrong. But it's all good, since Emma wasn't really in a place to go out with anyone then. Their time together is interrupted by Miranda's call, and Liam leaves. The next day, it's time to find the perfect cake for Miranda. Emma takes her mom along to Ed's bakery for some fun cake tasting time. They meet Liam and Ed already waiting for them. Ed and Nell remember each other from the farmer's market, and they share a smile together. Cake tasting goes so well, they find it difficult to make a choice, but Emma suggests a simple classic cake for the wedding. She suggests Ed makes a butter cake, which was their favorite cake growing up. Ed enlists Nell's help, and while baking the cake, they have fun playing around in the kitchen, with Ed in charge of cracking the eggs while Nell stirs the batter. When the cake is ready, it's a hit for the tasters, as it doesn't take time for everyone to polish off their plates. Cake tasting done. Emma and Liam run other wedding tasks, including checking out song lists, and trying out the wedding dresses for the bridal group. Miranda is pleased with Emma, as she fills her in on the progress they have made so far. Miranda is left surprised that Emma still is not considering starting her own wedding planning firm. The sisters share an emotional moment as Miranda thanks Emma for helping her out with the planning. Danielle is surprised when she finds Emma, who should be off work, at the office dropping off two new edgy updated designs for their client. Danielle is impressed with the designs, even though they are not exactly what their clients need, but she promises to show them. With Liam's project not kicking off, as he doesn't make any sales for his refurbished bikes, the artist and Emma comes into play as she decides to sketch a better drawing of his bicycles. Emma meets up with him and offers him the drawing, which serves as a logo for branding his bike shop. He is dumbstruck at her kind gesture, but Emma waves it off as nothing. They continue with their final plan for the wedding, which involves finding the place for the altar. Behind an arch perfect for the altar, Liam confesses to Emma that he has had fun throughout the process, and that she has a knack for planning weddings. Their moment together is interrupted by Liam's phone ringing. It's a call from Natalie, and as he walks away to answer the call, Emma looks disappointed that the two are still talking with each other. Unfortunately for their plans, the event center they plan to use develops a plumbing issue, which makes it impossible to host the wedding there. It's back to square one for Emma and Liam, as they have to find a new venue with a week to go. Emma has a mini panic attack, but Liam calms her down and promises that they will find a new place. As if on cue, Miranda calls her to check up on them. But Emma lies to her that everything is all nice and peaky with their plans. Like the proverbial when it rains, it pours, Miranda throws a bomb at them. Apparently she and Brett still have more work to do, so they have extended their trip, and will be coming back just a day before their wedding. Since everything is set, according to Emma, she reckons that everything is still okay. Or not, if we go by the shock on Emma and Liam's faces. Emma is forced to agree with her, worried about what this means for them. They set out to find a replacement for the venue as soon as possible. With all hands on deck, including Nels, making calls and trying to score a venue, it all proves fruitless, as the venues they find are unable to accommodate them. Frustrated at the deadlock they find themselves in, Emma is suddenly excited as a light bulb goes off in her head. She remembers the picturesque garden they visited, and like a well-oiled team, she is tasked with calling the vendors, while Liam goes off to check on the garden. With Natalie's help, he is able to decorate the space in time for the wedding. 
With everything almost ready for the wedding, including Miranda's wedding dress, Emma receives a call from Danielle. She is excited to inform Emma that their clients approved her updated designs, and they are ready to incorporate it into their project. Emma is delighted at the good news. Danielle informs Emma that her partners in Seattle are excited to meet her if she decides to take up the job, which involves major events, but no weddings. Emma doesn't look too enthused about the opportunity anymore, it doesn't give her the thrill and excitement she felt when planning her sister's wedding with Liam. The experience within five weeks has given her a hint about where her interest lies in event planning, and it is nowhere near business events, and luncheons. It's a day before the wedding finally, but Emma is anxious that neither Miranda nor Brett have contacted her to say whether they have boarded their flight or not. Nell tries hard to calm her down, but Emma is worried that the bride and groom might be stuck somewhere. She decides to wait up for them at Miranda's house, with a promise to hug her first, before going off on her for making her worry unnecessarily. Meanwhile Liam is at his workshop, he speaks fondly about Emma to Philip, his worker, who teases him about Emma, but he denies that they do not have anything together. He is reminded that they have no plans for the car that will take the couple home, so he decides to take care of that without involving Emma. Emma is excited when her sister and her fiancé walk through the door. She gifts Miranda a pair of tennis shoes for her wedding. This leaves Miranda surprised, and she finds it difficult to associate this Emma to the Emma Hall she used to know. Emma lets her know that planning her wedding has made her embrace spontaneity. The sisters share an emotional moment together, and Miranda is almost in tears as she thanks Emma for her help planning her wedding. On a lighter note, she reminds Emma that she is forgetting an important detail, which is Emma's date to the wedding. Emma is not bothered about it, assuring Miranda that she prefers to concentrate on her wedding rather than on a date. Miranda doesn't hold back on the issue, to Emma's consternation, curious about the budding relationship between Emma and Liam. Emma sports a smile on her face when she describes Liam, confessing that she likes him, but she isn't sure if her feelings are reciprocated. Miranda understands that Emma is afraid of getting a rejection from Liam, but she advises her to chase her dreams without fear. It's an emotional moment for the sisters, and they share a deep hug with tears in their eyes. Emma decides to take the bull by the horns and express her feelings to Liam. She drives to Liam's bike shop, but before she steps out of her car she recites her affirmation, willing strength for the task she has ahead of her. Her excitement at finally confessing her feelings fades when she enters the shop and finds Liam and Natalie talking. She overhears them talk about keeping something a secret. She pretends to watch the bikes when Natalie passes her, but she recognizes Emma and confirms Emma's fears when she tells her that she and Liam were just discussing flowers. Emma is gutted at the realization that Liam and Natalie are seeing each other. Unhappy that she is unable to carry out her plan, she hands him his suit for the wedding. Liam notices her subdued mood, but she assures him that everything is okay. She reverts to the old Emma, who's interested in only talking about wedding schedules and plans. When Liam calls her out on it, she informs him that she has decided to take the job in Seattle. Liam is disappointed at her decision, apparently she prefers her job to her happiness. Philip makes the situation worse when he divulges to Emma that Liam has a surprise date to the wedding tomorrow. That's all the information Emma needs to understand that she has no chance with Liam. The air between them becomes uncomfortable, and she claims to need eight hours of sleep before the big day as she heads out of his shop, leaving a confused Liam behind. He stares at her retreating figure as he wonders what went wrong. Sad at what just happened, she visits her mom, nothing like a good old soulful baking session with Nell to mend a broken heart, although the jury's out on the broken heart part. At her mom's insistence, she tells her about the new job in Seattle, although she has reservations about taking it. Nell, over a plate of yummy cookies, gives Emma some tips on how to come to the best decision for herself. It's the wedding day, and it's off to a great start as things are already looking up. Miranda looks resplendent in her wedding dress, odd at all the work Emma achieved within six weeks. She brings up the issue of Emma taking up wedding planning, but Emma doesn't have any of it. She takes an exception to talking about herself on Miranda's big day, although she looks sad when she remembers that Liam already has a date for the wedding. Emma is surprised that people really love the job she did with the wedding, and surprisingly, she gets an offer to plan a wedding soon. Stunned at this, she is interrupted by a call from Danielle. She informs Emma that their clients unfortunately do not want to go ahead with the new changes she made for the plan. It's like a light bulb moment for Emma as she realizes that she doesn't want to live her life planning events and major business luncheons that have no color and are not fun. She rejects the Seattle offer and decides to quit. Danielle is a good sport about it as she wishes Emma well in her future wedding planning endeavors. Emma shares the good news with Miranda, the sisters are excited, and they get their cue to proceed for the wedding ceremony. Miranda walks proudly on Nell's arm down the aisle. It's a beautiful ceremony, but Emma doesn't feel as happy as she should, as she keeps staring from Liam to Natalie, who sits with the crowd. During dancing, Liam notices that Emma is trying to avoid him, so he forces her to dance with him. 
Emma is further annoyed when Natalie interrupts them. She storms off to a corner as she sits alone to lick her wounds, observing sadly that every other person is paired with their partners, including her mom, except her. She gives her maid of honor speech, which centers on second chances, with a bit more finesse than the other time at the engagement party. Liam is stunned when Miranda mentions that Emma is not taking the Seattle job. He understands Emma's anger better when he learns that she thinks he brought a date to the wedding. He goes off to look for her and explain things better. Emma is seen sitting by herself as the noise and music from the party filters to where she sits. Philip finds her there, and he informs her that the secret Liam was keeping was the getaway car for the couple. And hey, as the driver, is Liam's plus one. Emma had absolutely no reason for being angry at poor Liam. The wedding party usher the newly wedded couple to their getaway cab. Emma apologizes to Liam for jumping to conclusions. He waves it off as he guides her to a sign of the logo she made for his bike shop. He informs her that his passion project has finally kicked off. Natalie's only role was introducing him to the garden's owners, who have been buying his bikes. Emma is embarrassed at her behavior towards him, so Liam suggests they give themselves a second chance to work things out. Emma agrees, and she lets him know that she has quit her job, and has also decided to start up her newfound passion, which is wedding planning. They are both excited about their new opportunities, and what it has in store for them. The movie ends with the duo sharing a passionate kiss, with beautiful smiles on their faces and the hope of better things to come.